Hi everyone, Matt Unruh here with DC3 Broadcasting with Gary Thomas, head football coach for the Dodge City Conks. And it's that time of year again, coach. Year three for you. You already have your, your scrimmage underway. Your, your thoughts on, on this team this year? Um, well, I mean, I feel good about where we're at. Um, it just like any other team in this conference, because of the way the rules are set up, you have to stay healthy. Um, you know, differently than probably at the four-year level. Obviously, there's going to be a drop-off sometimes from your ones to your twos, but the way uh, way the rules are set up in this conference, everybody, I mean, you drop off a cliff when you start getting banged up. So um, we're as talented as anybody in the in the country with our top 22 guys and, and maybe even our top 28 to the 30 guys. But after that, we we significantly drop off, and, and if we start getting banged up, it's... Uh, it's going to be a concern. <laughs> may not be a disaster, but it's going to be a concern. So. Well, is it, isn't that kind of the concern with any team in the Jayhawk right now in, in Juco yeah, football? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for us it's it's just an, an, a, a weird year. Last year, um, you know, we would have had at least bodies to put out there. There's some positions where if we get banged up, you know, we may have to use all three timeouts and, and teach a new guy position. <laughs> um, you know, it's that serious at some positions. but. Um, you know, as far as athletically, we're, we're, we're much better than we've been in years past. And, and uh, offensive line, we got a ton of guys back. Uh, defensive front should be as good as we've ever been. And those kind of things are, are the positives that if we can, uh, if we can stay healthy and, and uh, not get too into some situations where we're, we're having to kind of rob Peter to pay Paul, we're, we're going to be okay. Well, you, you go from making uh, the Region 6 playoffs in your mm -hmm. first year, go 3-8 and eight the next year, but that, that just kind of goes to show how much drop-off or how much you can jump up in, in JUCO football. Where, where are your feelings on a lot of the new guys coming in and where you're going to be at this year? Coach? Well, I think last year's deceptive, too. Um, you know, when you, when you look at where we started, taking over a team that had won three games in, in you know, well, yeah. well, six games in six years and was 0-9 the year before we took over, you know, the first year we hadn't rebuilt a program. We had kind of bandaged some wounds and and played a good football with a good group of kids. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't have a recruiting class that first year. We got hired on so late. And and so the second year we were really playing with that first recruiting class, which was last year when we were three and eight. And if you look at the scores of those games, not necessarily the scores, but if you look at the flow of the game, um, you know, six of those games were one possession games with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Um, and if you look at the year before that, six of those games were also one possession games in the fourth quarter. The difference is in 2013, we won five of them. In 2014, we lost five of them. Yeah. Um, you know, but if, and if you look a little deeper, you know, five freshman starters on the offensive line, uh, two freshman starters at wide receiver, um, a new running back, two freshman corners, um, you know, a defensive front that started two freshmen. Um, Mike Linebacker hurt us pretty bad. We had the number one player in the country at Mike Linebacker, and he ended up getting a scholarship to Arkansas in June, a month oh. before our season starts. Um, you know, we don't have an adequate replacement for the number one player in the country. Um, you know, and to be honest, we just missed on some safeties last year in recruiting, and they, they, they just weren't good enough to play in this conference. So, um, you know, this year was the year we really thought that we could build the program to where we want it to be. Um, and, and I think we're close to there. We've got four of those five starters back on the offensive line. One of them's been beat out by a transfer. Um, both the corners are back. Two of the starters at wide receiver are back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got a lot of pieces to the puzzle. We've rebuilt the defensive line. We've rebuilt the back end of the secondary. We're going to be young at linebacker, but we're going to be faster than we've ever been, uh, which, you know, if, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you better be fast because hmm. when you make mistakes, they recover faster. So um, ba bad to not know what you're doing and be slow at the same time. So... Um, you know, we'll be f the this will be the fastest defense we've ever had. Huh. Um, that we're physical up front. Um, the offensive line gives us some stability in what we're doing if we can stay healthy. Um, the only position we're breaking in a new body is at quarterback, and um, so far that's gone well. We'll see his his first true test on on Thursday. But he, you know, he's a winner. He came from back-to-back -back state championships in Colorado. He huh. hasn't lost a game in two years. So, you know, the kind of those kind of things are. are bring value in the recruiting process because it brings confidence in, in guys that they understand they don't get rattled and, and they have you know a positive outlook on how things are going. Well you mentioned the defensive speed this year and I know that was probably one of the toughest areas for you the past two years. How well improved do you think this defense is? Um, well we'll find out. Um, it, you know, <laughs> Trying not to make too many predictions but um, 
you know, if you're just going off of numbers, which is right now is all we really have to go off of, you know, our two defensive tackles I think will be as good as anyone in the, in the conference. Um, and even, even our third defensive tackle probably better than the third defensive tackles we've had in years past. Um, Jacob's back, who started 11 games for us last year and probably wasn't prepared to play last year, but uh, this year is a much better version of himself. Um, our Mike linebacker is the state champion in the 100 meters in the state of Alabama. He's a wow. 10 500 meter, and, and he's going to make some mistakes, and, and he'll get outmatched at times inside because of just the sheer physical nature of the game. But um, there's some things, there's some plays that he'll make on the perimeter that in the years past we couldn't have made. Um, you know, at Sam Backer is Antoine Turnage, who's a guy who's a defensive back in high school, uh, ran really well, just wasn't ready to play last year, redshirted for us, and, and uh, he'll be a guy that'll cover some ground and does a good job. Uh, on the other side is Marquise Blair, who signed with uh, Syracuse University out of high school. The NCAA just came in two weeks ago and deemed his test score not high enough for the NCAA clearinghouse. So, you know, we just literally brought him into camp about a week and a half ago. Um, guy that runs really well, strikes well. Um, you know, both of our corners run really well, and they've, you know, they held up for the most part last year. And, and uh, the difference is our safety in the back end. We're, we're much more athletic than we've ever been on the back end of our our defense. So those guys in our in our defense being a gap control defense where our safeties have to come up and be aggressive. The the good part about a gap control defense is it's very difficult to move the ball against when you do things right. Hmm. When you don't, it's a 70 yard touchdown every single time. <laughs> um, and that's where we were last year is, is we didn't adjust well enough but when we when we had guys that were confused or didn't do the right thing the the repercussions were uh, disastrous versus, you know, maybe a 25-yard gain. It was a 60-yard gain for us, and now we're playing catch-up the entire game. So, um, you know, hopefully being faster will um, cover up some of those holes, but we've still got to be physical. We still have to line up correctly. We still have to execute our assignment. We still have to pay attention and not fall asleep on the backside of stuff. And, and uh, you know, the, the better you get on defense, the more trick plays and misdirection and stuff like that you're going to be – you're going to get because – if you're better at people at the point of attack, there's no point in going right at them. Yeah. You better go where they're not or confuse them. So, um, you know, we're, we're not out of the woods yet just because we're more athletic. So we still have to have to play the defense the correct way. We still have to play the technique and the scheme the same way. And, and, and if we can do that, we'll be successful. Matt Under with Gary Thomas, head football coach for the DC3 Conks. And you mentioned a lot of the playmakers for defense. How, how about the offensive side? Who are some names that are going to stand out this year for the Conks? Well, from a media standpoint, we're getting a lot of attention. Um, whether it's deserved or not, we'll, we'll find out. You're, you know, you're only as good as your last game. But um, you know, in the recruiting world, you know, our tailback's the number one played, rated player in the country. Uh, he's committed to the University of Florida. Wow. Um, he's been banged up during camp, so we'll see how well he does on Thursday. How banged up he is. He's, you know, he's looked better the last couple of days, but we don't hit him at practice either. So, um, you know, that's going to be an interesting phenomenon as it goes on because if he gets banged up we 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 have another running back that I think will play really well but after that we kind of fall off a little bit and we don't have the depth that maybe we've had in years past last year we had three quality running backs that could all step in and play so this year we're we're about two and a half and, and we'll see how we get from there um, you know but he has a lot of big playability uh, the difference last year was he wasn't great as an every down back he was great at creating big plays for us um, this year we need him to be an every down back and still create some of the big plays yeah. so the responsibility grows. Um, and Jeff George at wide receiver is the number four rated player in the country and he's committed to the University of Tennessee. Um, had a good freshman year, um, you know, but with, with being tall and long on the outside and we've added a guy on the other side that's from Canada and he's also 6'6", six, six, so we're 6'6 six, six on the outside on both sides of the ball. Huh. And both guys run pretty well, but people are going to get more creative on defense to make sure those guys don't touch the football or don't create big plays. So that's going to change some of the looks that we get on defense. We may get more brackets on the outside. Um, we may get a lot more off coverage to make sure people don't get behind us. And if they're going to keep everything in front of them, then we've got to execute. And, you know, we've got to be able to run the football for five yard gains. We have to be able to throw the football for seven to eight yard gains. We have to do it consistently because if you're dropping passes and not converting first downs, you're, you're not going to score. And if people are going to attempt to take away the big play for us, um, you know, that we better be able to put together some 10 and 12 play drives to, to be able to score points. And, and we should be able to do that. But, but again, that goes back to if, if they're going to take away our, our taller players on the outside, then we better be able to run the football because there should be less people in the box. And, and at some point it just comes down to if they're going to play man coverage, our guys got to throw it to 
our guy and our guy's got to make the play and if our guy makes the play then we'll move the football and if our guy doesn't we're going to have some problems so well the good news is you got two uh really good receivers mm -hmm. and if you got two on the field you double team one the mm -hmm. other one should be open well we have christian booker in the slot was actually our team leader last year in receptions he got 53 balls for 900 yards or something like that so he was in the top 15 in the country in, in receptions and he's back he's committed to iowa state as well um so we've got some pieces to the puzzle again depth is going to be an issue um we're going to be in some more formations than we've been in in the past we have a new dimension to our offense we have some fullbacks tight ends that, that play really well um jamal wooten's a kid that redshirted for us last year um and he'll play some tight end fullback h-back um chris messer and DeAnthony blakey both out of leavenworth kansas um same stature same build three uh, you know violent type kids that are compact and explosive and powerful um so we'll We'll get into some more conventional pro style stuff, um, you know, tight end type formations to give some of the receivers a break so they're not taking every snap. And, and uh, that's where it's going to be a, a delicate process of, of being on the attack and making sure that we have fresh bodies in the fourth quarter because we don't have uh, enough backups to get people off the field. And that's going to be the biggest telling thing for us is, you know, if you're up by 28 points or you're down by 28 points, you need to get your starters off the field. You know, we're going to take 700 to 800 snaps on both sides of the football this year. And if you're asking 11 people to take all 800 of those snaps, they're not gonna hold up for an entire season. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing at corner, it's the same thing at safety. We just don't have the depth uh, that we've had or that other people have, I shouldn't say that we've had, that other people have, but we'll have some other pieces to the puzzle this year that, that we haven't had even on defense. You know, we have a third corner this year, which is something we've never had. Kyle Martin from Wichita Heights. Um, is a guy that plays every bit as well as our starters do and a guy that can take some snaps and, and we're not going to get beat up and he needs to play in some nickel situations and, and needs to play in some um, special teams roles where he's going to be a, a guy that's going to be a key component to the, probably the outcome of the game. Torian Gonzalez from Wichita North, uh, Wichita North um, is a guy that's going to have to take some snaps at safety also in our zone blitz packages and stuff like that. So we've got some guys in some positions that we haven't had in the past, uh, which gives us a little more flexibility and a little more dynamic in our approach, but it still comes down to depth and, and quality snaps and being able to keep people fresh over the long term. Oh, when, when you don't have a lot of depth, it seems like that's when you really want your starters to be in shape. And right. Are they at where, you're, where you want them to be in, in I conditioning? Think so. I think so. Uh, we're not, we don't condition a lot. We try to keep practice pretty high tempo. So we're, you know, if we're always moving around, we, we shouldn't need to condition at yeah. the end. Uh, we do maybe once a week at conditioning and things like that but um you know we'll, we'll find out more on thursday but you know the fact is the other teams are in the same situation as we are as far as uh you know how many snaps the starters are getting and stuff like that because even if you have depth you know if it's a seven point ball game in the fourth quarter everyone's still got their starters in anyway mm -hmm. so um where the depth comes into account is going to be in the, your flexibility of getting into different packages stuff like that and if you're obviously up or down in a ball game being able to get some starters out of the game and and keep them rested for maybe a, a you know a point in time the week after three weeks from there that might be a little more important as far as the outcome of the game well and uh doesn't look like we have that that uh, bye week that we had a year or two ago as well but we do have that jv game so maybe that'd be a good chance to rest some yeah, later we in the year. we chose to not go to Air Force this year uh, because of that. It's uh, with the scrimmage and then 11 straight weeks. It's it's 12 straight weeks of contact football and and that week off. Um, not that the the Sterling JV will will be just a walk in the park, but it it will give us an opportunity to get some other guys into the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing we ran into as well is, you know, at the junior college level, you're trying to help kids get recruited, and and by doing that, they need to get on the field. They need to get playing time, and if if everything is a one possession game, very rarely are you going to get other bodies into the game. You know, if, if it's a 14 point game or a 17 point game with six minutes to go in the game, you still have a chance to win or lose. Um, we need some situations where we can get other guys into the games and give them an opportunity to get film and get themselves recruited and all that kind of stuff. And that's hopefully what the Sterling game will, will give us an opportunity. Next year, uh, we've, we've rolled the schedule over where they've scheduled two bye weeks in. Um, so I think we're going to play a week earlier and maybe end a week later. Um, 
and we have a chance to fill one of those to get your 11th game and then you will have a bye week we're all you know all the head coaches at the conference meeting complain about the same thing is, is it doesn't matter who you are i mean if you're if you're hutch and you're at the top of the conference you, you still have some issues of bodies getting banged up and and not being able to put you know the your best version of yourself out there week to week and and, and that's a concern for all of us now speaking of hutch they uh, KJCCC uh, get the number one preseason mm -hmm. ranking in the conference, followed by Coffeyville Butler and our mm -hmm. Conks at fourth. Uh, mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that, Coach? Uh, about where I thought we'd get picked. Um, you know, it's deceptive this year. Um, Hutch is going to be, you know, they'll be the best version of themselves, as good as they've been in the past. Uh, I think Coffeyville is probably in the one or two spot, maybe interchangeable. Um, Butler, we'll see. They're under kind of new leadership, and and uh, I'm sure they're still as talented as they've ever been. Um, Garden, that they're putting together a pretty good product, and we'll we'll see what they look like here early in the year. They're going to have a bunch of talented guys. Highland might have their best team that they've had in the last two years. Huh. Uh, this year, uh, they've got a bunch of offensive linemen back, a bunch of skill guys back. Uh, and Fort Scott, I think, is going to be the sleeper. They they've got a quarterback this year that's going to be a little more dynamic than they've had in the past. Their running back who led the nation in rushing last year is back. Uh, they've got two defensive tackles that are both committed to SEC schools and a defensive end that's committed to a Big 12 school. Huh. Uh, they'll be, as I think, as talented as anyone in the conference. And then Independence has got a ton of starters back on the offensive, uh, on the offensive, that, the offensive team that moved the ball really well last year, and their defense is going to be better. So, um, you know, it's hard to say where anyone's going to end up because by the time you play them, you know, we'll catch Independence healthy and Garden healthy, but by the time we get to Hutch, Butler, Coffeyville, Fort Scott, Highland, mm. Independence, uh, or not Independence, but those other five, there's no telling what they'll look like, and there's no telling what we'll look like. So, you know, if they get banged up by the time, uh, in years past, by the time we've gotten to those schools, they don't look like they looked, you know, early in the season. So I try not to worry about, you know, where people are at right now because, you know, we don't play Highland till November. <laughs> There's no telling what they're going to look like in November. We were we were a much different looking football team in November yep. when we went to their place last year than we were in in September. So, well, another year in the Jayhawk Conference with with no slouches really and a mm -hmm. tough season. And it all kicks off uh, this Thursday, the 27th, against Ellsworth in Ellsworth, Iowa, not Ellsworth, Kansas. So a, a little longer of a drive. And uh, what what do you learn about your team when you have a, a long road trip, a, a bunch of new guys, mm -hmm. and then a, a formidable opponent like Ellsworth um well it's you know it's a different dynamic preparing for the season uh, last year we um, you know we were home for our first two weeks so the fact is when you're there's a lot more you can get done when you're preparing for two home games um, you know and, and it would be even different if we were going to Butler or Hutch for our first game where it's just a two hour and a half hour drive I mean, this is a, a ten and a half hour trip. It's kind of a major mm -hmm. haul. It'll be our longest trip of the year, and it's right out of the gate. The things that you don't think about, um, you know, people don't worry about when they think of how you prepare for a game. Is, you know, we're obviously still preparing for the football game, so we've got to have practice plans, practice scripts, scout team cards, all the normal stuff that we would do. We have to put helmet decals on our helmets. Still, we have <laughs> to hand out our travel gear so that our guys all look the same when we're traveling. Um, we have to pack all of our equipment. We have to have extra jerseys in case jerseys get ripped, blood, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have to have extra helmets, extra girdles, extra cleats. Have to have all of our headsets we haven't tested yet. We have to have, uh, you know, the players have to pack bags. You know, you realize when you put guys on the road that come from different parts of the country, some of them have never been on vacation. Some of them have never packed a bag before. They uh. don't, you know, you, you get to the game and they're like, coach, I don't have my cleats. Well, why don't you have your cleats? Well, when you when your furthest game in high school was a half an hour away, you never had to worry about packing your cleats. They yeah. were on your, they were on your feet. Um, so all of the things that go along with that and in teaching that process, um, those things take time, and and they take time out of your day to do it. So we'll you know we'll be here till eleven o'clock tonight, getting all those things taken care of, and then we're leaving at five in the morning. Um, you know, and that's something else they're not used to doing. I mean, yeah. to, to leave at five in the morning means they better be in the locker room at four forty-five and have their stuff packed. Tonight, which some of them won't do, they'll be in there at 4.37 trying to pack their stuff and, and get on the bus. But, you know, then we're going to practice at 11 a.m. In, in Lawrence in, at KU. Then we're going to keep driving and we'll get up to Ames, Iowa about 5 o'clock. We'll stop for dinner and then we'll have our meetings and we'll get into bed about 11 o'clock. Then we've got a 6 o'clock kickoff, so we still got to drive another hour. We've got time to kill. Um, those are all different things. Anytime you add something new, um, it distracts us and it, it's, it's a setback for a little bit of time. 
Um, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to work through. It's, the good part about the season is once you get into the second, third, and fourth week, you get into a routine where, you know, Sunday we watch film, Monday you're off, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are hard days, Friday we cut back, Saturday we play, you know, repeat it and keep going for 12 weeks. Playing on a Thursday night, 10 hours from home, yeah. all things we've never done before. So there's, there's no, you know, we try not to give them too much of the schedule ahead of time because some of it they don't need to know and some of it we are <laughs> some of it we're, we're scheduling as we go but every time you add a, 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 a new unique thing to the schedule it, it is it is something that takes away from your preparation and your in your thought process so those are things that we'll have to work through but you know it's 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 not something that we can't overcome it's just going to be another hurdle in the way of of trying to put ourselves in a position to win the football game. I'll try not to keep you too much longer then coach you got a lot <laughs> to do today this this being filmed on Tuesday the 25th game at um, looks like six o'clock yep. Central Time in Iowa. Damon Post will have the call on 15:50 a.m. The Sports Town, ConkSports.com as well. I, I do believe that live streams if you have a Windows Media Player, so be sure you're attentive on that. So uh, before I let you go, Coach Ellsworth, what what do you know about them and, and how they look? Um, you know, not a lot. They're uh, you know they're not in what I'd consider a major mark or a major market area. Um, so they don't get a ton of uh, news coverage. They do have a small paper there that does cover them decently. Um, you know, based on who it looks like they're going to start at quarterback there. Uh, he's more of a thrower. He's not much of a run threat, which last year he was quite the opposite. Um, so I don't know that I think there'll be a different, we have some film during the middle of the year last year where that kid actually played as a freshman. So I think, uh, we have a pretty good grasp on what they may do. They're going to be a lot more athletic at the wide receiver position uh, than they were last year. The running back is back, uh, but it looks like they do have some some good quality wideouts, which I didn't think they really had last year. Um, they'll, they'll be a, a better version of what they were last year. This is their second year in the program, second year recruiting. Um, on paper, um, they don't look anything too scary. <laughs> um, you know, defensively, they're not going to be big up front, but they may be fast. Um, you know, so those are things that we'll all find out Thursday. I'd, I'll do a little more research today now that I have it too deep on them and, and see exactly what we're working with. But they haven't changed over on the staff. We know where they're going to line up. We know what they're going to do. Uh, it's just a matter of executing and, and lining up correctly and, and doing all the things that we've we've done over the last six weeks, and, and, and we'll be okay. Uh, I, would, I would be hard-pressed to think that we would get out-athleted at any point in time. Um, so it's, it's going to really come down to getting executing out executing them and and it's just going to come down to like I said it, it, we're going to play man coverage and at some time they're going to play man coverage and they're going to throw it to their guy and we're going to throw it to our guy and and either our guys can make a catch or our corners are going to break the pass up or you know if we can do those things and and uh, I think that is where the game I think is going to be decided is is who makes more plays because uh, they're going to be well coached we'll be well coached and and I think both of the schemes are going to be sound so it's really going to come down to who makes more plays. It'll be exciting either way. Good to get the season started. Dodge City Conks taking on Ellsworth Community College in Iowa Falls, 6 p.m. Uh, Thursday, the uh, 27th. This being filmed on the 25th of August. And and one more thing, Coach. I know you're stopping in at, at Lawrence to practice. Yeah. Going to see DeAndre Ford while you're there. Probably. Um, we'll be there at about 11 o'clock. So unless he has class or something like that, I imagine he'll stop by. Um, talk to him a couple times through camp. Um, he been reading more about him in the paper. Mm -hmm. there, there seems to be a hot topic in that area, yeah. pressing the starter for uh, for playing time. I, I doubt he'll be the game one starter. Um, I think they announced uh, yesterday Cozart is okay. the game one um, starter. Which I, which I imagine. I mean, he's been there for a year in the system, and, and uh, DeAndre's been there for literally two and a half weeks. Uh, it's hard to displace somebody in two and a half weeks, just the amount of terminology. And it's like it's like going into a Spanish class and thinking that you're going to learn the language in two yeah. weeks. It's, it's difficult to do, but... Um, he'll get playing time at some point in time, um, probably in every game. And, uh, you know, I know that they, that they feel comfortable if, if DeAndre ends up being the guy that, that Cozart potentially could go to wide receiver and give them, make them more wow. athletic on the outside. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that that's a move that they'll make, but I know it's a move that they've talked about, and I'm sure that they've talked to both, both guys about that scenario. But um, DeAndre's excited. He loves it there. Um, and I, I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll be – excited with that with whatever role he's a, he's a good teammate so i don't think he's going to have any any hard feelings about not being the guy game one and and uh, he'll give them the best version of himself and i'd be i'd be shocked if he wasn't the starter there at some point in the next year or two that he's that he's there and um, 
and I think they'll be a better football program for it. I'm sure he'll be ready to go as, as backup at any time because that's, that's how you have to play it when you're the number two. Mm -hmm. um, any other D1 guys uh, from the Conks last year that we should be looking out for? Um, we'll have a bunch of guys playing on TV this year. Um, at Southern Miss, Michael Thomas was a preseason all-conference USA guy. Probably will be a guy that gets invited to the NFL Combine next year. He'll wow. be a top 300 guy. Um, Devontae Robinson is at Utah State. He'll be starting this year. Uh, started a lot last year, uh, and they had a great season. Um, William French is now at Southeast Louisiana. They were a playoff team last year for the FCS. James Bynes is at South Alabama, uh, and he'll play a bunch for them. Ty Tyrese Thomas is at South Alabama and will play for them this year at running back. Um, who else? Um, Josh Williams is playing at Arkansas. Um, probably potentially will be a starter this year at linebacker. Hmm. Had about 40 tackles last year as a, as a guy that rotated in uh, at linebacker for them. Um, who else? Um, there's a bunch more. It's a good problem <laughs> to have, though. It is a good, good problem, problem to have, but there will be some guys, uh, plenty of guys playing on TV, obviously DeAndre. Um, and then with this year's class, we've already got three guys committed. We've got uh, um, Chris Gaynor's got like 25 offers um, from Big 12 schools, Conference USA schools. I think Texas a and is going to offer him in the next couple of days. Uh, Elijah Battle has uh, multiple Division One offers, Big 12, uh, Pac-12. Uh, DJ Henderson, our other corners, got offers from... Um, Conference USA, some Mac school, stuff like that. So um, there'll be a bunch of guys that, you know, in the next three years, and I think going into the draft this year, um, you know, we potentially will have four NFL combine guys next year, potentially, wow. um, if it plays out right. I think Denzel McDaniel will be a combine guy. Um, and I'd be shocked if he wasn't a top four round draft pick. Um, he's up for the Nagurski Award, the Defensive Player of the Year for the NCAA. He's on the watch list wow. of the top, I Perfect. think, 35 guys. Um, uh, Darvell Harris is down at North Alabama, and uh, they're not a Division One school, but he'll be a top 300 guy that'll get invited to the Combine. He'll be one of the fastest kids in the nation. Hmm. He'll probably be a top six-round draft pick, I would imagine. Uh, Michael Thomas from Southern Miss, he'll be a, probably an NFL Combine guy. Um, potentially Terrell Klingskills, potentially. He's now at Texas A&M Commerce. He left K-State. Hmm. Um, but he'll still be a guy that I think with his, if he can perform like he's performed in the past, potentially he may not be a top 300 combine guy, but he'll probably be a, uh, a free agent and uh, he'll get into a camp somewhere. So um, it's going to be a fun year and, and, you know, hopefully some of those guys will get an opportunity to keep on playing after college and, and make a little bit of money to put in their pocket before they got to go yeah. figure out what they want to do for the rest of their life. Um, but, you know, it's a cool experience. It's, you know, it's good publicity for us. Uh, Marcus Hardison. Uh, played last night on TV. Uh, he's with the Cincinnati Bengals now. Uh, he played here in 2012 with the previous staff and was here during that spring semester when we got hired. Um, and he was a fourth round draft pick this year. So um, he's been doing well. Had his first NFL sack a week and a half ago. So uh, we're getting a lot of free publicity, which is which is always good. Bring so, it on. Uh, the more the merrier. And we'll have probably another nine to ten Division One guys off of this team as long as they stay on track to graduate. And, and, uh, and uh, that's... It's the reason they come here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's for an opportunity to do what they're doing. So we're excited about that, that we're giving them those opportunities, and hopefully they represent as well. well hopefully to make a run at the Jayhawk as well. Conks picked uh, fourth in the preseason polls in KJCCC and uh, start the season this Thursday, August 27th, against Ellsworth, Iowa, in uh, Iowa Falls. Again, 1550 AM, the Sports Hound. Damon Post on the call. Uh, and KongSports.com as well. Kick off at 6 p.m. Pre-game around 5.30, 5.40. Gary Thomas, uh, head football coach for the Conquistadors. Thanks again and Appreciate have it. a safe trip. Thank you much. Thanks again for watching DC3 Broadcasting.